everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a record player. <laughs> scales! It's time to talk about scales. <laughs> What's a scale? To be very simple, notes up and down, one after one another. <laughs> I prefer the Dutch word tone ladder, which literally means a note ladder. That makes so much more sense. They seem to be this necessary part of classical music, but they don't have the most exciting or interesting reputation. So I thought I would talk to you today about scales to help you get into them, um, understand why they're important and how we can actually practice them in a way that's gonna help our playing. So a lot of people think they're boring, but they don't have to be. I'm not sure that I can make this fun, but I can make it more interesting and more valuable. What's more fun than that? So why are scales good for you? First of all, you are taking yourself to the recorded gym. You are doing a workout on your instrument. Working on your technique in this way is essential to reach a high level and all artists do this. All dancers work on their technique, all artists work on their technique, and yes, all musicians, you know what I'm gonna say. Of course, there are many ways to work on your technique, scales is just one of them, but it's quite an important part, especially in classical music. And why? I'll get to that later. Did you know that music is one of the most complex things that you can do with your brain because it uses all these different ways of learning and intelligence. And scales also touch on these too, the humble scale. The most obvious one are your motor skills, the fingers, the tongue, and the coordination between the two, which is one of the hardest aspects of the recorder. Another big area is the intellectual knowledge of this music and how it works, the harmony and why these notes and how it all fits together. So gradually, this is gonna demystify the sheet music that you have in front of you. You'll look at it and you'll understand why those notes are there on the page. You'll know what to expect, which makes it easier for your fingers. And then if you want to improvise, for example, you'll know, ah, G major, that has these notes, D flat minor, that has these notes, that's D flat minor. Practicing scales also helps you to get to know your instrument. And I promise you, spending time getting to know this relationship is one of the best things that you can do for yourself as a musician. When I play, I don't wanna feel like this is a separate thing. I wanna feel like it's an extension of my body and my musical ideas, as cheesy as it sounds. And scales can really just help you spend that time. It's gonna help develop your ear training, your oral skills. Um, not only with tuning, <laughs> gradually you'll be able to pick out, ah, that note wasn't right, not because it's a B flat instead of a B, but because I know how it should sound. And then for classical music, one of the most important things, if you practice all scales, I think that you've already practiced like 50% of your music. <laughs> So much classical music, especially Baroque and Renaissance, which is, you know, the recorders, hometown, um, is made up of scales. Handel, D minor sonata. The Flight of the Bumblebee. Is just chromatic scales. So I already have my scales in my fingers, in my brain, when I come to the music, it's not random and I'm not starting completely from scratch. I can just be like, oh, that's the C major scale. Bra! So it's all very well and good me saying this. What if you're starting at the beginning and you're like, huh? what are we actually going to practice? What makes one type of scale different from another? Well, in Western classical music, you have the octave divided into 12 equal steps. <laughs> Those are your keys on the piano. In a scale, you will pick some of those notes. The ones we see most often in classical music are major and minor scales, major and minor. Let's make it more complicated. There are different types of minor. Um, this is a melodic minor scale and a harmonic minor. 
chromatic scales, that's where you hit all 12 steps of the octave. You have all the different modes that are used in jazz music, church music, folk music. Pentatonic scales, they are five notes. Even octatonic scales, which are eight notes. Whole tone scales, where the difference between each note is a whole tone. And of course we don't only have to play our scales up and down, forwards and backwards, we can keep things interesting and challenging by playing them in different combinations, scales in thirds, fourths, octaves, Um, groups. And then there are the related patterns and exercises like arpeggios. Broken chords. See, there's so much out there, scales can truly become your lifelong companions. So this is a lot of information, but it's just to give you a bit of an idea of some of the variety out there. When you're playing scales, you will obviously take this in very small steps, one at a time. You don't have to learn it all within a month or a year or even 10 years. I firmly believe that if you are practicing something, you should have in your head what you're listening for. You can't listen for absolutely everything at once, you'll get really overwhelmed. So I like to pick one thing that I'm really paying attention to. And the same goes for your scales. This will help you to stay engaged and to be able to follow your progress. It's much more satisfying. I wrote down some things that you can listen for. Um, listening for clean finger changes, coordination, speed, the key signature, correct notes, tuning, the high notes, sound, um, those tricky half holes. Really listen as you go and stay engaged. The next is the two approaches to scales, especially major and minor ones. Um, are you learning the scale by its key signature or by the different steps of the scale? Now, every scale has a different key signature. I know by now that G major has an F sharp, F major has a B flat, A major has three sharps. Um, there are countless charts and memory aids that you can use to remember all of this, and this was how I learnt scales, remembering the key signature. So I would follow the alphabet basically, and then remember which notes I had to flatten or sharpen. Now I remember meeting a friend who looked at scales completely differently. He didn't think about the key signature, but about the steps of the scale. So he'd be like, first note, tone, tone, semitone. For me, this was way more confusing, but ultimately what he was doing, connecting the scale to how it sounded, not to how he read it on the page, but to how it sounded. I think this is really valuable too. There is also reading. There are many scale books you can buy where you can read the scale. I think that can be really, really handy in the beginning. Just to learn how it looks, you'll also make that connection if you meet a scale within a piece of sheet music. It will help you to learn um, the different key signatures. So in the end, combining all these skills, reading, listening, playing by ear, muscle memory, understanding of the harmony, the degrees of the scale, it's gonna make you a super powerful musician. Another way that I like to approach my scales is approaching it like doing a workout in the gym. By which I mean, I was doing some workouts where you have a technical phase and a challenge phase. First, in the technical phase, we learned the move that we were doing, slowly, controlled, with an emphasis on form. Your posture, the tuning, your hand position, getting the notes in the right order, it's about carefully learning the basics 
really well. So the challenge phase for your scales is where you're gonna bring in your variety and really push yourself. You can get your metronome on and try and play it fast, fast, fast. You can try it with different articulations, double tonguing, going up, going down, playing those notes in different groups, moving up and down between keys, keeping that variety and keeping pushing yourself. Having really clear ideas of what I'm going for makes my practice so much more effective. Um, as if this wasn't all enough fun for you, I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions about scales. So let's see. Okay, do you have a favorite scale? Well, no, but I know which is my least favorite scale. F sharp major on the recorder because watch my fingers. <laughs> Do you think young beginners should learn the difficult scales earlier so they aren't afraid? Hmm. I think when you're choosing which scales to learn, it really helps if they're relevant to what you're doing at that moment. If you're learning a piece in C major, you could warm up or spend five minutes a day playing the scale of C major. Then you can directly apply it and see the results in the music that you're playing. There's nothing to stop you learning all the scales right away and it totally depends on the student. But in my experience, um, it helps me to learn something within a context. Aha, so scale patterns would be nice. Yes. I mean, you don't only have to go up and then back down again. For you beginners, you can try a five note scale. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. This is already really good for you. Go to the last note of your piece and start there. Remember to look in your key signatures to see if there's any notes that you need to change and try. And you can go down and back up again. If you're getting really advanced and you want a lot of extra scale patterns to challenge you, um, try and think of the opposite pattern to the ones you know. For example, if you're always starting at the bottom and going up, do it the other way around. It's surprisingly confusing. Or you could do patterns of notes like one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Or you could jump between different degrees of the scale. Okay, a couple of questions about chromatic scales. How to practice those, especially these half holes at the bottom. For these half holes, I notice that I keep my hand incredibly relaxed and I actually move, not from my fingers, which would involve kind of scraping the knuckle, but pulling back from my wrist. And a really good pattern for chromatic notes, it's hard, but it groups of three. looking for even more inspiration and would like to do some scales and exercises from a book there are a couple that I really like the first is the daily lesson by Hans Ulrich steps this is full of different exercises based on each degree of the scale the other is um, the advanced school of recorder playing book two yes book two by Helmut Munkemeyer I love this because it's scale exercises and then directly related to excerpts from Baroque music. Is it necessary to practice the super high notes that need the leg to be played? I would say if you need these notes in the piece of music, yes, because you'll need them. And if you are an advanced player, yes. Our instrument does not only go up to we can go far beyond that. And I think if you really want to become advanced, you should practice the full range of your recorder. There is one single reason for not doing that. And that's because it's hard. <laughs> this is gonna give you so much more freedom and flexibility on your instrument. You might not need it every day, but you know that you can do it. If you're a beginner or an intermediate player, don't worry about it yet. And then the last one, how to make them legato and smooth and change these registers. You'll notice that when you're playing low, you're blowing a little bit more like, 
and when you're playing high it becomes more like so an arpeggio can be really good practice for this start slow when you do this do the notes one by one listening to the sound of each one and you can also go back and forth between two notes without the tongue to allow you to find the sound and to make sure that your fingers are working smoothly so um i've talked a lot i feel like i've probably given you more questions than answers but that's wonderful that's music and of course i've only touched on a tiny corner of the scale world i've only really talked about western classical music there are so many other systems of music that use different tuning systems microtonal scales um that this was like a small introduction so I hope that I've shown you why scales can actually be really good for you and given you a bit more intention if you're going to be practicing with them. Woo! That's it. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. And if you're excellent at your chromatic scales, here's my tutorial on the flight of the bumblebee. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!